Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about VLAN. <clears throat> but before starting the VLAN, we need to understand what is broadcast domain, what is collision domain. So broadcast domain is a domain in which a broadcast is forwarded. A broadcast domain contains all devices that can reach each other at the data link layer by using broadcast. <clears throat> so that means when we are talking about the broadcast so it means if we have multiple devices in the network and <clears throat> any one of the device sends information over the network will be received by all the devices of the network so that means all are sharing the same broadcast domain so when we talk about the hub <clears throat> or the switches so hub and switches are sharing the same broadcast domain so, so they all the ports in these devices having having the same broadcast domain but when we talk about the router then all the ports of the router are are having the separate broadcast domain the routers do not forward the traffic from one port to the another port now what is collision domain so as the name says so the packets are colliding somewhere in the network so what does it mean suppose the two devices are sending the traffic at the same time so the packets will collide and when it happens so they send that they send the packets again and because of this nature we can see the latency in the network and we can see the network performance issue right so <clears throat> uh, for the collision domain the hub uh, has all the ports sharing the same collision domain right but in case of the bridges routers switches all the ports are having the different collision domain so that's the difference between the collision domain and the broadcast domain so let's understand both terminologies by <coughs> a diagram so here we can see collision domain and when we talk about the collision domain so as i said the hub shares the one uh, sh shares the same collision domain for all the ports that is right you can see that the hub having the one collision domain but the switches all the ports of the switches have separate collision domain so it's one two three four same if we talk about the router the router has also a separate collision domain so we can see one two three if we count then how many collision domain we have in this trigram so if we calculate it's one two three four five six we have six collision domain in this trigram now understand the broadcast domain <clears throat> so broadcast domain only the router has a capability that has the separate broadcast domain for all the ports so if we, if we look at the router we can see every port has a separate broadcast domain right but all other devices like the hub the switches share the same broadcast domain so that's the difference we have between the collision domain and the broadcast domain right so after understanding the collision domain and the broadcast domain coming back to the vlan so what is the vlan so vlan operates at layer 2 in an OSI reference model. <clears throat> it is a logical group of network devices having the same broadcast domain. VLAN divides one switch into multiple logical switch. What it means? Uh, by default, in switch, we have VLAN 1 that is responsible for carrying all the traffic. So anything coming in and out from the switch will have to use the VLAN 1. But when we create the VLAN, we segregate that ne that particular network into the multiple network segments. Now, it is not necessary that it has to use a VLAN 1 only. If we have created multiple VLANs, suppose if we have created VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So, if anything is coming from VLAN 10, we can use only VLAN 10 to go out. It will not use VLAN 1. So, what we, what we did? we divided one network into the multiple network that's why we said it divides one switch into multiple logical switches we have discussed about broadcast domain so one vlan is always directly proportional to the one broadcast domain now let's understand the vlan 
by using a diagram <clears throat> here we can see we have three buildings right so it's building a building b and building c we can see all the three buildings have the three departments so one is a hr department another is a finance department third is a marketing department and we have employees for all these departments sitting in all these three buildings but right now without vlan what's happening any department can any employee of any department can reach each other there is no restriction in terms of security in terms of anything if if any employee from building a in this vlan which is an hr vlan can communicate with the employee in the building c which is in marketing department so this is before creating the vlan but when we create vlans in switch a switch b switch c and we assign these ports you know that these ports the the users sitting in the hr department the user sitting in the finance department the user sitting in the marketing departments we create the vlans we assign these ports to the vlan then we restrict these ports this that the these vlans can communicate with each other right the hr department communicate with hr department finance department and communicate with finance department marketing department communicate with the marketing department so that that happens so the you know we this is just a one switch right <clears throat> before creating the vlans all the vlans all the users having the same broadcast domain that means a traffic coming in from one port flooding to all the ports but when we create the vlan we reduce the efficiency of this like we reduce the load of the switch and we segregate uh, these ports into the vlans and if anything coming from this port will use only uh, will use only this port to go out from the switch so that's how the vlan helps in segregating the network and helps in proper utilization of the switch this is the same diagram and this is the same lab we are going to use for implementation of the vlan and we will discuss the various commands how we can verify the config of the vlans and what we can see in the config right moving on what are the benefits of vlan <clears throat> so we know there are the three things that matters a lot the one thing the security we we can see the higher security in terms when we talk about the vlan we can see the better performance of the switch that's right and the last the cost reduction now coming back to our to a diagram let's see how is that possible so when we talk about the security right the security yes in terms of security if suppose the, the here we have just the three vlans the three departments but suppose if we have the management vlan as well which is used for configuring the devices for the various management purpose right and if anyone from the outside tries to compromise our network then if they are trying to access the particular vlan then that will be restricted to that vlan only they cannot move from that particular vlan to the whole network environment they can use that particular vlan so so when we are talking about the vlan it provides a security to the entire network second thing <clears throat> better performance that is right we can see initially what was happening if the traffic is coming from one port to the switch flooding to all the ports of the switch uh, unnecessary whether the destined uh, traffic should have to be reached at the other port or not it doesn't matter in that case but here we can see if we segregates the network by using the vlan then it will reach to that particular network only the ports configured for that particular network only so reduces the load on the switch right <clears throat> and last but not the least cost reduction so that's right initially what was happening if we do not use the vlan then we have to create the different different environment 
for different different departments we have to create the different setup for the hr we have to create the different setup for the finance and same goes for the marketing but now now we have implemented the vlan now it is not required we can configure in the same particular switch for these requirements so we can see we have benefits definitely have a benefits for using the vlan right <clears throat> now when we talk about let's go in the technical technicality of vlan right so vlan normally divided into the two ranges so it is a normal range and the extended range so in the in the vlan in the switches by default we cannot make the changes for these vlans we can see vlan 1 vlan 1002 vlan 1003 so these are the by default vlan we cannot delete this vlan all the switches have this vlan inbuilt right the normal range vlan are using the ids from 1 to 1005 with the default management vlan 1 which cannot be erased that's right we cannot erase this vlan in the switch <coughs> all right second what are extended <coughs> okay what are extended VLANs? Extended VLANs number start from 1006 to 4096, right? So when we talk about the extended VLANs, we, we this is very uh, this is not even supported by all the switches, so everywhere. But yes, uh, we can use extended VLAN, and that range starts from 1006 to 4096. <coughs> what is VLAN trunking protocol? VLAN trunking protocol helps network helps network administrator to manage the VLAN configuration between the switches and it works with the normal range of VLAN it does not work with the extended range of VLAN so VLAN trunking protocol is nothing is just keeping the database of the VLAN managing the VLAN and uh, uh, that's that's what we can do with the VLAN trunking protocol we, we, we will discuss more about VDB in the future upcoming slides <coughs> vlan can be categorized in data vlan default native management and the voice vlan so these are the category we can use with the vlan we can use the vlan as a data vlan as a default vlan native vlan management vlan voice vlan if we going into detail all that so data vlan we use for 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 you know for the traffic when whether any data is coming default vlan the default vlan by default default vlan we have vlan one so we use default vlan the native vlan the native vlan means it carries the tagged and untracked traffic we will discuss more in detail in the upcoming slides management vlan when we configure the network devices we call it as a management vlan and the voice vlan voice over ip devices connected to the port that has to configure with the voice vlan so these are different different categories of the vlan we use in the network environment right we will discuss in detail in upcoming slides right when when i talk about the vtp when i talk about the trunking <coughs> when i want to talk about the various things <coughs> now the deployment of vlans so vlan can be deployed in two ways so the static vlans and the dynamic vlan so if i talk about the it standard if i talk about what is going in trend we are not using this dynamic vlan mention this in mind we cannot we, we, because we we do not have uh, you know we do, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot administrate over the dynamic vlan dynamic vlan are not too common in today's deployment dynamic vlans are configured using using the vlan membership policy server vmps is a server that assigns the port to the vlan <coughs> that happens dynamically on the basis of the mac address so suppose if any of the port moving from one location to the another location then vmps server is responsible for assigning for configuring the port uh, for the host connecting to the switch right but in case of the static vlan we configure these vlan manually we configure interfaces manually and this is the standard it standard we follow always for when we talk about the vlan we always configure the static vlan we do not configure the dynamic vlans because we don't have much control over dynamic vlan right <clears throat> 
now <clears throat> when we talk about the what is going on with the vlan what are the configurations because as i said i will also share my experience the it experience what is the trend today in the vlan so you can see the most of the networks today are carrying the voice traffic along with the data traffic <clears throat> the voice traffic must meet certain parameters in order for voice over ip to work correctly voice vlan are designed to assist you in providing quality of service voice for voice network because an interface can carry the both voice data and <clears throat> data traffic and the voice traffic you must use this configuration in the interface when we are when we which identifies the voice traffic passing out that port now let's see the commands to configure the vlan to adding the interface into the vlan and what are the things we can do with the configuration of vlan and we can verify the commands in the configuration so uh, we can see like for creating the vlans when we are creating vlan we have to just put the vlan this is a vlan identifier vlan 20 right this is vlan identifier and if you want to give the name to the vlan we can give the name to the vlan by by just putting the command name and the name that we want to give to the vlan and then exit and this is a command just for creating the vlan now when we are adding interface to the vlan that means when we are adding port to the vlan then we just need to go inside that interface by using this command interface and the interface name number and then switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20 we have configured this port with vlan 20 this is a command to configure the vlan in the interface and when we talk about that if we want to configure the interface with the both data traffic and the voice traffic with the voice qs setting then after going into the interface we need to apply this command this is for the qs setting this uh, prioritize the traffic um, voice this prioritize the voice traffic then we can configure the voice vlan this is a vlan 150 switch port voice vlan 150 switch port mode access and then switch port access vlan 20 in my upcoming slides i will discuss more detail about the access port trunk port tagging untagging and various things okay so these are the configuration these are the configuration command we use for the vlan creating vlan adding interface to, into the vlan and adding interface for the data in the voice vlan right and what are the commands to verify these traffic this this is on my second slide so uh, these are the commands we can use to verify the configuration to verify that is working properly or not we can see the traffic we can see everything here so these are the commands you can note down the show interface interface name and the switch port show vlan brief show vlan show vlan id and the id number show vlan name so we can we can find out the vlan by using the number as well by using the name as well or in common we can look for all the vlans at the same time by using these two commands so show vlan give in detail it also includes the default vlan it will show you the default vlan and this will show the customized vlan only okay and this is on the interface we can see the we can see the commands on the interface configured right now moving on to the i am using the packet tracer here to deploy the vlan we will see everything here in the packet tracer i use packet tracer for this lab uh, we can see like uh, this is uh, this is a hr department this is finance department i have uh, uh, defined the colors for each department you can see this is for the uh, hr department finance department marketing department right now i have configured these pc over this subnet 10.1.1.0/24 so if uh, you try to ping if you see the config let me just let you know the config of this ip config so it is configured with the 10.1.1.1 ip address in the similar fashion this system is configured with the 1.1.1.2 ip address and all the systems are configured with within this subnet only 
10.1.1.9 right so if i want to ping to the pc9 which is sitting in the building c okay uh, pc9 okay consider this as a pc9 pc8 as a pc9 and this is sitting in the building c right and this is of hr department and this is also hr department let's first try from this pc to the this pc can i ping that or not so on the pc1 let's ping ping 10.1.1.9 10 10.1. yeah i can ping it let's verify it that we have this ip address on the system yeah 10.1.1.9 is ip address of this system yeah we can reach to the building c on the same department now let's try to ping this uh, pc7 from the hr department okay it it should be 10.1.1.8 right so we can ping it it is good now let's see the ip address here and that is ip address of this system and which is sitting in the building c in the different department so right now what we can see we have not configured anything on the switch so any anything can communicate with any of the devices in the network no restriction in the network now let's configure the vlan one by one <clears throat> so we can see this pc is connected let's first create the vlans we need to create the three vlans right hr department finance department marketing department right now on this connect on this switch we just have the two department right the hr department and the finance department so i will configure only two departments right there is no need to configure the marketing department if we don't have any employee connecting to that switch for that department so config t vlan let's say 10 name of the vlan hr department we have configured the hr department hr department vlan that's only the two command for that's how we can configure the vlan in the switch now let's configure the marketing department VLAN 20 name marketing department we have configured the marketing department as well now let's see show VLAN see I told you that these VLANs can nor be created neither be deleted we cannot do anything with these these vlans these are the default vlan we have in all the switches and we have created two vlan recently so the one is hr department another one is a marketing department we can see both the vlans are active but we have not assigned any ports in these vlans all the ports by default are assigned in the vlan one right now let's configure the ports <clears throat> config t this is interface uh, fast ethernet 0 slash 1 we are inside the interface now configure switch port mode access switch port vlan not voice vlan access vlan and it is uh, 10 right no shut exit now let's configure the another interface it is f is o2 f0 slash 2 interface f a 0 slash 2 this is also in the hr department interface uh, this is 
switch port mode access switch port mode switch port access vlan 10 no shut we have configured these two ports in the hr department let's see by using show vlan brief now we can see these two ports are assigned to the hr department and we can verify this here right now let's configure this management vlan <clears throat> Sorry, that's the uh, finance department. Okay. VLAN. VLAN is already configured. Interface. FA0-3. So, port mode access. Switch port access. VLAN 20. Exit. Exit show VLAN brief show VLAN brief we can see one port is assigned to the marketing two ports are assigned to the HR department we are good on this switch right now let's try to ping from this PC to the other now you can see we cannot ping PC uh, the you know the employee setting and the building C right similarly if we want to try this we cannot ping we cannot reach that because we have configured these in the VLANs but they are still on the VLAN one these are uh, both are in the different VLAN will not work right now let's configure in the similar way to the in this as well on this switch config t first we need to create the vlans so we have just two department here one is a marketing department another one is a hr department so let's configure these two vlan vlan 10 name <clears throat> hr exit vlan 20 name marketing department we have configured the vlan now let's configure the interface it's fa0 slash 3 yes configured now switch port mode access switch port access vlan uh, o3 is in the hr department okay vlan 10 vlan 10 we have configured for the hr department now let's configure interface <clears throat> fa 0 slash 2 switch port mode access switch port access vlan 20 interface fa0 slash 1 switch port mode access switch port access vlan uh, 20 we have configured these interfaces now check it in the show vlan brief show vlan brief we can see the interfaces are now in these two vlans hr department and the marketing department now let's try to ping uh, this hr department to the hr department right Can you tell me what is wrong with this config? Hmm? 
why it is not able to ping to the PC9 in the building 3. If you see the config, we have placed HR department in VLAN 10 and we have placed marketing department in the VLAN 20. Now let's see here. HR department is, is in VLAN 10 and marketing department is VLAN 20. It is good. So it is happening because of a reason. We have not configured this switch with the VLANs because the, the traffic coming over the VLAN, VLAN 10 and the VLAN 20 is still going to the VLAN 1 discarded by the switch not forwarding anywhere that's why we have to configure the VLANs here as well config T <clears throat> VLAN 10 name HR exit now interface now if you have configured the vlan this should work now now we have configured the vlans in all these three switches so but <clears throat> if we see the the switches cannot communicate with each other you know why because of a reason because switch has to be because you know the traffic from these vlans now earlier it was just a one vlan throughout the network so there was uh, no problem single broadcast domain it was perfectly working fine but now we have two vlans and these two vlans has to communicate through this interlink between these two switches now this link has to configure it with the trunk port so that it can allow multiple vlans to traverse through this link right so i have configured this link this link into the trunk port and uh, i'll not go into the details because i'll be covering uh, in a separate uh, uh, session about the trunk mode access port and the everything in detail about that so i have just configured these switches with this config I can show you that so you can see ethernet past ethernet 0 slash 4 is configured with the trunk port similarly this port is also configured with the trunk port so all these four ports are configured with the trunk port now if we see that the HR department is VLAN 10 finance department is in VLAN 20 marketing department <coughs> is in VLAN 30 so if you try to ping from this building uh, the HR department so let's try to ping to the PC PC 9 which is in so let's try to ping the PC from this PC to this PC which is sitting on the IP address 10.1.1.9 right let's try that <clears throat> And we can ping that so that means we can ping this network <clears throat> uh, this network in this switch to this VLAN in the switch building 3 but if you try to ping any other VLAN in any of the building and in any of the department we cannot ping uh, from any of the system which is in different VLAN. Let's try if I try to ping ten dot one dot one dot eight. So ten dot one dot one dot eight is in is in marketing VLAN in building C. We cannot ping that right we can see the RTOs but if we try to ping from building C to the building B on the marketing VLAN. Let's try that. The IP address should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 
it should be sitting at 10.1.1.6 yeah we can ping that so that's how we configured the vlans in the switches only the vlan and the ports within a particular vlan can communicate with each other they cannot the different different vlans cannot communicate with each other and uh, and we have configured the trunk port in between the switches so that's how it works thank you guys for watching this video Stay tuned. Goodbye.